As the NHL trade deadline gets closer, the more Flames trade rumors are intensifying. And a new report has come out that displays many potential realistic trades for the Flames' top trade asset. And as we get into that, I want to know from you guys, would this be good asset management from Craig Conroy? Welcome to Flames Digest. I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new around here and you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe for all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors on the Flames. And it's getting crazy as we get into trade season. Like I said, a new report has come out. It's from Eric Duacek of The Athletic. So very, very credible source. He is a great hockey mind, a great hockey business mind, and he has come out with some very, very realistic mock trades. Now, the first one we'll get into, we've talked about a bit before, but it is Hannafin goes home. As we know, Hannafin is pretty much guaranteed on the way out of Calgary, which isn't exactly fantastic for the franchise or the city. It's another American defenseman wanting to play elsewhere. But that doesn't mean that Hannafin's value has, you know, gone down a ton. His value is still very high. And to get him to Boston, a place where he wants to be, and a place, a city that would really want him, an organization that would really want him, his value is up there. So let's look in at this mock trade. So Calgary Flames trade Noah Hannafin to the Boston Bruins for Matthew Potra, a 2026 second rounder and a 2025 third rounder. In theory, the template for a Hannafin to Boston trade would be the deal the Bruins made with Anaheim to acquire Hampus Lindholm a couple years ago. A first round pick, two seconds, a decent player, and a salary they wanted to dump. Boston was prepared to pay a King's ransom because they were able to sign Lindholm to an extension. Most believe Hannafin will go to market this summer and listen to offers, knowing someone will likely overpay to get him as a premier unrestricted free agent. Hannafin, signed, should have similar value to Lindholm, but Hannafin as a rental would have to come at a discount. Is that where the Bruins should focus their efforts when help down the middle seems like a greater priority? Hard to say, but the Bruins are having another good season. In a year where there are no clear Stanley Cup favorites, getting a 23-minute-per-night defenseman to flesh out a decor that includes Lindholm and Charlie McAvoy greatly enhances their chances of success. So this is talking here, if the Flames are able to sign Hannafin and trade him, my goodness, would his value be so high? Especially if they sign him first, then the trade value should go up. Everyone knows what he'll actually be worth now. But let's continue the article here. Presumably, they'll have the money to spend to sign Hannafin in the offseason because the $4.5 million in carryover overages bonuses for Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci come off the books after this year. Greater priority for Boston might be a top center, blah, 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 whatever. Hannafin looks as if he'll go to market for sure, and all that dithering will likely pay off in a meaningful way. But getting Hannafin to Boston now so he can get a taste of life as a Bruin could meaningfully enhance their chances of retaining him after July. So the Bruins could be a very, very good suitor for Noah Hannafin. And it looks like it'd be good for both sides. Hannafin would fit in great in Boston and definitely help them. We've seen how well he plays in Boston. For some reason, he always seems to play absolutely lights out when he visits Beantown. So to bring him home, my goodness, that'd be great. And the Flames, if they can get a similar haul to what Hampus Lindholm went for, fan. Fantastic. That would be amazing. But I also really like the mock trade here that's not completely similar to the Lindholm trade. Hampus Lindholm we're talking about. Um, in Matthew Potra, I thought he was untouchable. But to hear him come up in a mock trade is amazing. And he is exactly what the Flames need. A highly touted prospect who he may not be, you know, the most developed player ever the most established nhl caliber player but my goodness he's almost as good as prospects get he was an absolute steal by the bruins and to hear his name coming out is wild to throw in a second round pick and a third round pick for hannafin i think that trade is decently fair and actually really good for the flames if hannafin's on his way out maybe that puts the flames in a bit a tiny bit of a bind but to get that much of a haul would be It'd be Christmas in March. You know, it would be amazing. I'm sure most Flames fans would agree. I would love to see that trade happen. Get Hannafin home. He's happy. Get a big return for Calgary. And all Flames fans are happy. Now let's get into the second trade here. One I was not expecting to see. But Flames find forward. So the Flames find in a forward isn't exactly what I expected to see in here. But 
it's not out of the realm of possibility here. Um, you know, the Flames, if they have to trade away certain players so that they can bring in other ones or trade away certain picks so that they can bring in higher ones, anything's in the realm of possibility right now. I've never seen a team so focused on a trade deadline in my entire life. And I'm not just being biased as, you know, a Calgarian. But I've never seen so much talk around one team and it affecting the team so much. But anyway, let's get into this one because I was shocked. Ottawa Senators trade Shane Pinto to the Flames for the Canucks' first round pick acquired in the Elias Lindholm deal. Lindholm's departure left a significant void at center for Calgary, which theoretically could be filled internally if they decide to shift Connor Zary back to the middle or his original position. But the reality is, the Flames could use a young center with upside, and so then you turn to Ottawa, where the Senators have Stutzla, Josh Norris, Ridley Gregg, and Pinto, all of whom are natural centers. It's forced Gregg to the wing for now, as he's playing with Pinto, since Pinto's come back from the suspension, but the Senators could theoretically part with one or the other in a package. And Pinto does make sense, you know, he obviously had to miss the entire first half of the season this year after he was caught gambling, we'll say, is the best way to put it. Sports betting, whatever it was. He was suspended for a long time. Maybe that leaves a bit of a sour taste in the Sens' mouths. You know, their ownership, their management. Maybe Steven Steos, you know, he used to play with Craig Conroy. Maybe they're buddies and can get a deal going here. Let's continue the article here. So Ottawa needs some experience and probably there'd be no better fit than Calgary's Blake Coleman in a return, who is 32, a two-time Stanley Cup winner, signed for three more years at just under $5 million and amid the best season of his career. Very true. He was so hot going into the All-Star break. The only problem is Coleman has a 10-team no-trade clause and presumably Ottawa is on it. I would assume Ottawa is on most players' no-trade lists. So they'd need to talk to him about it. And the reality is Calgary might need Coleman as badly as Ottawa might, given how they're pushing youngsters into the NHL lineup. Yes, it's great. Hopefully the Flames can bring in as many youngsters as possible. And Coleman can be a great guy who can help develop them. You know, he, look, he's won the Cups. He plays a hard game. You know, as a smaller guy, he's shown what it takes to be in the NHL. But if it takes a cap dump of Coleman to Ottawa, and who knows what Ottawa might do. They might be getting rid of Tarasenko at the deadline. So there you go. Coleman slots right in that lineup. The Flames get Pinto. Is Pinto the best fit for Calgary? Maybe not exactly, but it's interesting to maybe give up one of those first round picks. Obviously, Vancouver's is expected to be a later round pick for a player who is established. And I think since Pinto's come back, he has nine points in 12 games or something. Pretty good. He could fit in very well in the Flames lineup and gain so much experience given the right opportunity. He's an offensive demon. He can do it on the power play. Not a bad fit for Calgary. I like this one as well from Mr. Eric. Now, let's get into the third one. Tanny 2TO. It has been speculated. I mean, every single player gets speculated to go to Toronto. But Chris Tanev, bring him home as well to Toronto. I mean, it's pretty much everyone in this video go home. If only Pinto was from Calgary. I think he's American from New York State or something. But either way, if Hannafin gets to go home, then maybe Tanev gets to go home. So let's see how we can make this happen. So Arizona Coyotes trade Matt Dumba and a 2024 second round draft choice to the Leafs for Toronto's 2024 first rounder. I know the Leafs don't necessarily want to give up that first rounder, but for the right trade, they might do it. Alternatively, Toronto flips the second rounder to the Calgary Flames for Chris Tanev. I think Tanev is worth way more than just a second rounder. Now, if it's Arizona's second rounder, obviously that's a high, a high pick in the second round. Because Arizona, they're abysmal right now. They have forgotten how to win a game, and they have a de decently tough schedule coming up as well. So things aren't looking great for them, so it should be a higher pick. Let's continue here. So meanwhile, Toronto gets a valuable rental in Dumba plus potentially the draft capital to meet Calgary's asking price for Chris Tanev, a player the Leafs would like to add to play alongside Morgan Riley on the first pair. Man, we're talking about all the players who have gotten big suspensions so far this year. Riley, Pinto, who else? But I think Tanev should be worth more than a second round pick. There should be maybe a Nick Robertson add in there, Fraser Minton, Easton Cowan, you know, at least a good prospect. Something like that, and I'm sure the Leafs would be willing to give it up in order to get Tanev. I think most Leafs fans out there, the ones that have their heads on straight, want Chris Tanev. He is the missing piece. That's the defenseman they have not had in years and years and years. 
that would help them win. So I think Leafs fans would do this. Flames, I'm not 100% sure. I think it would have to be more than just a second round pick, even if it's, you know, Arizona second round pick. I don't know. I think if Dumba goes for <laughs> a first round pick, I think Tanev can go for more than a second round pick. So this one may be a little less in the realm of possibility, but it has the right building blocks here. The skeleton's there. We just need the meat of the actual deal here. I think there needs to be more on the Calgary-Toronto side. But I like this kind of three-way trade that could potentially be building. I really, really, really like this article. I recommend if you want to read all the other mock trades in it, please check it out. It's on The Athletic, like I said. It's just all the, you know, dream mock trades. Definitely worth taking a look at. And it was exciting to see a lot of decent Flames trades in there. That about does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're new around here. And of course, make sure you have a wonderful rest of your day.